What's up guys, this is Junior Tour one here. Long time no see. I know, I know. Well anyways, here we are going to be going over my home built lab unit, one watt blue laser. Okay, there's a lot of story behind this, so I'll try to keep it somewhat short and sweet. Uh, one thing I'd like to throw out, sorry for the low video quality. Unfortunately, I got into a very bad wreck. And... My wonderful Sanyo camcorder did not survive. So, we'll save that for another video. But, moving along here, we're going to go over the build and get to use this thing some. Uh, even though this camera sucks, and it's a disgrace. But, if you can see inside there, you see quite some heat sinkage. What is that? That is overkill, my friends. So anyways, uh, it cost me roughly, hmm... I think 40 bucks to build this because I bought the laser diode for about 30 and then I spent roughly 10 on the copper diode housing and uh, everything else was free but my time does not count towards that money if it did this would probably be worth a million dollars in my book I spent probably maybe three weeks fabricating this and getting it all neat compact and pretty the way I want it to be so Anyways, let's go over it. Obviously, it's in an old computer power supply box, and I did already pull out two screws, so that's why that's popping apart. Um, anyways, here's the output, of course. I have an undersized focus ring. I want to get a bigger one to cover up my hack job cut there, but that'll be okay, meanwhile. Um, we have the standard box. This 120 slash 240 volt switch does absolutely nothing because it runs off 120 and that's that So this does nothing. It's completely disconnected. This is your on and off switch as it should be And here's your power input it takes the standard cord imagine that beautiful, huh? So I do have plans to repaint this I'm gonna have to use some rubbing alcohol or lacquer or acetone or whatever the fuck I find to clean off the stickiness and to get rid of the sticker, I tried and tried and tried to peel and then eventually said, fuck it. So, moving along from that, let's get her tore down for you. So maybe by some miracle my camera will stay focused. That would be wonderful. I moved over here because there's better lighting since this camera doesn't know what light is, apparently. So there goes the cover. Well, what do we have here? A whole lot of overkill. There is absolutely no reason for this amount of uh, cooling. But overkill is always good in my book. So, what does this consist of? Well, obviously, a power supply, which then goes into a fuse and then a rectifier, but we're going to twist it. And then, here is my driver, and the diode, and the cooling fan. The cooling fan is the standard cooling fan that comes with the box, so that was also improvised. So anyways, what do we have? That is Pentium 4 heatsink. Let's get into the really interesting stuff. Okay, what is this? Well, there's my copper module that houses the diode, of course. It's press fit. What is this? This is an electrical ground lug. Perhaps not always a ground, but that's what it's most commonly used for. I believe this was a 3 out. It might have been a 4 out connector. I'm not entirely sure because I don't remember. Anyways, whatever it was, it fit that module perfect. Almost. Almost. I had to drill it out one drill size, and then it fit good and snug. So I put some thermal paste in there, pressed the module in there, and then tightened that up just for kicks. Um, moving along from that, after drilling it out, you can see it's a little bit thin on the walls. And I wanted to maintain absolute cooling on that diode. I want it to hold ambient room temperature. So with that being said, I tried it as is without these two blocks of aluminum. Well, it did work. It was cool enough. But I noticed the top would get warm while the bottom stays cool. Why is that? Because the walls were too thin and there wasn't enough heat transfer. So my bright idea, get a couple scrap pieces of aluminum, polish them up. Screw them on in there, sandwich it in there with some thermal paste, and bam! The heat gets transferred all the way around besides the top. Heat goes to here, and then goes to the heat sink, vice versa. Anyways, um, I probably don't even need the fan, but why not? 
I want this thing to last forever. So moving along, what do we have here? Well, that, my friends, is a popsicle stick. Why would I use that? Well, that particular driver had multiple ICs on there of different heights, and it had to be electrically from, uh, insulated from the heat sink. So, how do I do that? I used thermal pads, multiple ones with different layers. That way I could cover every IC and maintain coolness on everything. So, I used this popsicle stick because it applies an even pressure and it holds that pressure. I wanted to use a piece of plexiglass or something, but I didn't have anything strong enough. So, and that's what we got, and that's what works. So, moving along here. Oh, cool, there was my screwdriver. Here's the power supply 11.2 volt transformer, AC. Goes into a 1 amp fuse. Goes into my bridge rectifier. Converts that AC into DC, but it is still paused, so we go into a ridiculous amount of capacitance. So anyways, it branches out from there, goes into the positive leg of my board, and then branches off to the power supply and the fan. Well, the fan needs 12 volts, so we get 12 volts out of there, it goes into the fan, bada boom, bada bing. Well, that's too much voltage for that driver. It's actually not, but I want to make sure everything stays happy. So the driver is only getting, I think, 5 volts because I drop it through, I put it through these dropping resistors. So let's use it some. And voila. And yes, I do have this beam defocused because I don't plan on burning a hole through my door. Who likes to vape? Well, I like to vape for multiple reasons. One, it goes very good with lasers. Beautiful. Hey, kitty cat. Do you like your convenient food station? I'm sure you do. Pretty solid. Turn the light back on, and it's still pretty solid. So, let's see what we can do here. Maybe by some miracle, my camera won't tip over. That would be beautiful. So, here we have some standard electrical tape. Quite frankly, the expensive professional electrical grade one. And it's sort of cut right through that. And once again, I apologize for the angle of the camera. There's really not too much I can do for that. Can we get a fire? <laughs> yes, we can. We can get a fire very easy. Let's try it again. There is no faking that. And let's try it again. Hey, maybe I can move this some. Yeah, yeah, how about it? Pretty easy. And this baby can run 24-7, 365, probably for years and years and years because this diode doesn't even get remotely warm. And to those who think I maybe, maybe forgot about high voltage. So there you have it. 